Hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome. I am so glad you guys are here at our AMP Your Adrenals class. If you're watching live or if you're watching the replay, welcome. I am Dr. Laura Ritchie. I am a national board certified health and wellness coach. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I specialize in women's health and functional nutrition coaching, and I'm an essential oil educator and leader with doTERRA. And what I do is work with women who are struggling with different health concerns to help them get more energy and feel great so that they can live their best life. I really appreciate you guys being here and we have a giveaway for a US viewer watching live. So stay tuned for all of the details on how you can enter that. I'm going to make sure that you guys can hear me and see me okay. And then we are going to kick off. Hello, everybody. And we have Yay. looks like you guys can see and hear me, which is wonderful. So we are going to get started and jump right into our class here. And I can't wait to share. This is something that is really a struggle for a lot of women where you may be feeling like you don't have a lot of energy or you're losing your sex drive or you have to live on sugar and caffeine in order to function or maybe you're gaining a lot of weight gain around the middle and this is going on and you see your doctor because maybe you don't feel great and they run labs and tell you that everything is normal but you don't feel normal so that's really what we're going to focus on and talk about is adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency and how that can be affecting your health and your wellness and what we can do about it to help. So we've got people hopping on over on Facebook and Zoom. It's so great to see you guys. And I'm gonna share my screen with you. We'll make sure that you guys can see my slides and we'll kick off. All right, it looks like it is working well. So here we go, this is your AMP, your adrenals class. And before we kick off, I'd just like to share this, that this is not intended to be health or medical advice. This is really just a sharing of information for my own research and education and experience. And I really encourage you to make your own healthcare decisions based in partnership with your qualified healthcare professional with all of that. And we're gonna dive into this, there's a lot to cover. So save your questions till the end and we will get to those as well. Just make sure that you write them down and then we can type them in at the end. But this is a little bit of my journey, a little bit of my background, and I share this with you to let you know that not only am I a practitioner, but I'm also a patient. I've been on both sides of the spectrum with this. I was actually diagnosed with an extremely rare sarcoma called a desmoid tumor in 2011. You can see it there in that CT scan and that's actually the tumor at the top. They put synthetic mesh in and then that mesh herniated. So what you're seeing on the bottom is the hernia a year later after that tumor was removed. Long story short, I had three more surgeries, the last being where they completely reconstructed and took out all of the synthetic mesh and built me a new abdominal wall with my muscle. Big surgery, was in the hospital for five days, had those drains coming out that you can see in that picture, and then was diagnosed with adult hip dysplasia. So I went through some really large surgeries called periacetabular osteotomies, where they basically break your pelvis in several places and build you a new joint. This is bigger than hip replacement surgery, believe it or not. And was diagnosed with chronic Lyme disease in 2015, was on high doses of vitamin C and magnesium. And you guys can see there the rashes. That's actually Bartonella. It's a co-infection of Lyme. And that top right-hand picture, just changing my diet, not even starting treatment specifically, but just dietary changes. I used to get these horrible, painful rashes after I would take a bath and it improves significantly. So these are the catalysts going through my own healing journey that really brought an interest into functional medicine, functional nutrition, bringing in the essential oils, all of these things to support myself. And it's why I'm so passionate about what I do and why I wanna help other people who may be struggling because there are other options out there. So let's talk a little bit about what the adrenal glands are so they sit like little hats on top of your kidneys and they're the size of a walnut and the weight of a grape. And there's an inner part that actually, it's the medulla there. So you can see that it secretes adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, norepinephrine, and these are those androgens. And then there's an outer part that secretes cortisol, DHEA, and aldosterone. So these are endocrine glands. They actually produce hormones. So they're very important in our body. And you can see there, they're right over those kidneys, like those little hats. 
And what's the purpose of the adrenal glands? Well, they really help to allow the body to deal with stress. When we are stressed, that sympathetic nervous system gets triggered and we go into fight or flight, or in some people's cases, freeze. And this actually shuts all activity towards the lizard brain, not the wizard, so you can run away, right? So it's your energy of your body's responses. It keeps the body's stress reactions in check. And it modulates these meta metabolic processes in the body. So think distribution of fat around the waist, blood sugar regulation, cardiovascular function, GI function, digestion, utilization of carbs and fats, major source of sex hormones also during menopause. So when you take really good care of your adrenals earlier in life, and this is why I think it's so important for us to have this conversation around adrenal health, when you care for them and you take care of them, they can produce sex hormones later in life during menopause. So they're really, really important. And again, if there was a, a stressful response, it's going to shunt all that activity towards getting away, right? Running away, it's going to increase your heart rate, increase your blood pressure to fight or to flight. But this is also at a cost because your digestive system shuts down. It doesn't fully get absorbed what you're eating. You don't get all of the nutrients from what you're eating. It shuts down your immune system. And these people tend to get sick more readily. Maybe you're that person that catches every cold or flu that comes by. And DHEA is released when we're not stressed. And this is our growth and repair hormone. So we talk about the lizard brain and the wizard brain. The lizard is that more primitive fight or flight. The wizard is those cognitive thinking part of the brain where you're able to reason. That kind of shuts down when we're in a stressed out state. So you can see the adrenals are able to help us and support us when we are stressed, but we're not supposed to live in a stressed out state all of the time. That's when we can run into issues with that. And this is what we're talking about with overactive adrenals. So you're wired but tired. You can't fall asleep. Maybe you're under a lot of stress. Maybe you're noticing that weight gain, especially around the middle when you get stressed. Or you wake up tired, you feel super fatigued even after you got eight hours of sleep. Or maybe you perspire easily or excessively with a little activity. You just really notice that, oh man, a little bit of activity really affects me. Or maybe you're one of those people that feels sick after you exercise. Those are all signs that maybe the adrenals are a little overactive and we need to start doing some things to support the body. So low adrenals. If you're struggling with low energy, if you're often getting sick, you have that poor exercise recovery that we talked about. Ligament and tendon laxity. This is a really interesting one. Say you visit your chiropractor and you get an adjustment and that adjustment just isn't holding or you just have a lot of ligament laxity. These can be some telltale signs that there may be an adrenal insufficiency going on. Maybe you have cold intolerance or cold all the time or you crave salt low blood pressure, especially standing, maybe you stand up and you feel really dizzy. Maybe your hair feels really thin or it starts to fall out in big chunks. And it's interesting because thyroid and adrenal kind of go hand in hand. Some of the symptoms can be similar. Light sensitivity, maybe you just, oh, bright lights, even bright sounds or loud sounds can really bother you. Or you start noticing that you have dry skin. So these are all telltale signs. Just kind of check in with yourself and notice if you're dealing with any of those currently. And this is where we need to talk about the circadian rhythms because the body is very smart. We were divinely designed, right? And we're meant to be cyclical. And in our modern day society, that's kind of changed things, but this affects our hormones. So I love this image. This is actually from the paleomom.com. And it talks about regulating the circadian rhythm. So you can see that we've got cortisol, that's the line in black, and then we have melatonin, that's the line in red there. And there's this inverse relationship with the two, and it's a delicate balance that we have. So you're gonna see here, ideally, cortisol is going to peak in the morning, it's gonna help you wake up, and it's gonna decrease and kind of drop down later throughout the day with that and then decreasing at nighttime so that you can go to sleep. The problem is 
throughout the day, it's going up and it comes back down. If you are feeling frequently stressed out all the time, cortisol is that stress hormone that's going to be pumped out a lot. And we have to have this balance with melatonin because what happens is at nighttime, melatonin is actually going to increase and that's what helps us stay asleep and feel good. And then it decreases before we wake up and then cortisol kicks in to help us get up. So there's this delicate balance and we're going to talk about morning light and the importance of that. But what I want you to take from this slide is that the adrenals love routine. They love when you go to bed every night at the same time, when you wake up every morning at the same time, when you're eating your meals at the same time, when you exercise at the same time. Think about with young children, they love routine too. Maybe you know you have your meal times, your nap times, your bath time. We need to be nurturing and mothering ourselves as well. And this is really important. So nowadays, right, we have lights that can come on. So the sun may set, but we can turn on all these artificial lights and that throws off our production of melatonin. And it tricks the body into thinking it's still daytime when it's nighttime. You know, especially now in the summer here in the States, it's, the sun sets much later and it's different. In the winter time, the sun sets earlier. We have more darker hours. Interestingly enough, fall and winter season is adrenal healing season because it's a time for rest, it gets darker earlier and you really want to optimize your rest and sleep. Now I'm going to challenge you that in the summertime, we can start to pick up and follow some of these things and continue with our adrenal healing in the fall, in the winter and honor those seasons because we are cyclical beings, just like nature, just like something in nature doesn't bloom all year. We need to honor and respect our energy with that as well. So this is something really interesting called the pregnenolone steel. And this is how the adrenals affect your sex hormones. And this is actually a really beautiful image that I found from healthylivingnutritionaltherapy.com. And it shows this really nicely because you can see here that the adrenals produce cortisol. Cortisol isn't always bad. I think some people give cortisol or I'm sorry, excuse me, cholesterol. So the adrenal glands produce cholesterol and cholesterol isn't always the bad guy we need it for sex hormone production. It's really important. So cholesterol produces pregnenolone. And then we have two options here. Do you see where there's two options that we can make DHEA and testosterone and estrogen? Or there's another option where we can go over here and we can make progesterone and we can make cortisol. So again, we're divinely created. It is all made with a purpose here. So if we waste pregnenolone by making cortisol, by being stressed out all the time, all of these things, you have no pregnenolone left over. So there's no sex drive. You may have low libido, uh, PMS symptoms, menopausal symptoms, hormonal imbalance, because nature is very smart. It will say, oh, wow, this is a really stressful time right now. It's not safe to have a baby in a stressful environment. So it's thinking that if there's a famine going on, there's some type of stressful event going on, it's not gonna be safe to have a baby right now. So we're not making estrogen and progesterone. If that's an issue, if you're having hormone issues, you need to look at the adrenals. Now DHEA is released when we're not stressed. And again, this is the growth and repair hormone. We want to be making DHEA. So when we're looking at this and if the DHEA is tanked, if we're having issues with sex hormones, that is telling us that there is a constant stress going on. It's reducing the production of sex hormones because stress is going to pull everything in that direction of that adrenaline, norepinephrine, making more cortisol, right? Because so again, the body's designed, like if we're, if we're a stressor, we always use that analogy of running away from the tiger, right? It's going to kick in and it's going to help us with that fight or flight. But the issue in today's society is we're not running away from a tiger, but we may have a stressful job or a stressful boss or something else going on that is causing chronic stress. And that is affecting us, especially day in, day out, because the body is designed to handle a little bit of stress at a time, but not this chronic stress that's going on that is so rampant in our society today. So my mentor, Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo, I learned a lot of this from, as well as Dr. Jessica Drummond, 
they're talking about how the world's not going to change we have to change so we need to start changing our response to stress and we can do that with a couple things and we'll talk about that but this is really really important so causes of adrenal insufficiency we talk about chronic stress this is a big thing right in 2009 more than 50 percent of americans consume one half pound of sugar per day that's 180 pounds of sugar per year. And that was back in 2009. That was 10 years ago. I am sure that that statistic has increased dramatically. So lots of sugar, caffeine, alcohol, breads. This is food stress on the body, right? These are all things that are very nutrient depleted foods. They're very high glycemic foods. So that is going to affect our body as well. There's mental and emotional stress. So these periods of prolonged emotional stress and several stressful events in a row that can happen. So really looking at that and how it can tax the immune system. It can, our toxic exposure, we think of endocrine disruptors, things in our hygiene products, air fresheners, sprays, different things, sunscreen we even talked about last month, all of these different things. Poor sleep, sleep quality, really matters and the adrenals love when you are in bed by 10 p.m. and getting eight to 10 hours of sleep a night. If you're not getting that, it's stressing the adrenals more. So we really want to look at sleep. Sleep is going to be super, super important with adrenal healing in that because that's the rest and restore time for the body. And I will say some of my private clients with adrenal insufficiency, they really need to sleep some of them 10 to 12 hours a night. It's really time to start rebuilding those reserves in the body. Eating too close to bedtime. Again, it kind of depends. There's a rule there. We have to kind of look at that, but you want to leave at least three hours, ideally between your last meal and bedtime because it can disrupt sleep. It can keep you up while your body's trying to digest and absorb all of that, but it can actually increase cortisol and it can inhibit that growth hormone, which burns fat. Growth hormone helps us burn fat. Now, here's the thing. If we're in an adrenal insufficiency period, usually these people have unregulated blood sugar and their blood sugar is going all over the place and having these spikes. So sometimes, for a period of time, they may notice that eating a small snack before bed, something that's got some protein and fat and fiber, think maybe a couple slices of green apple and some almond butter. Maybe you put some cinnamon spice or cinnamon essential oil, mix it into your almond butter and eat that before bed. If you're one of those people that's waking up, it might be a blood sugar crash issue, a cortisol issue. So having a small snack, notice I said small, before bed can be helpful. But if you're not one of those people and don't need it, I would recommend don't eat right before bed because again, it can inhibit that growth hormone production. So everybody's a little bit different. We have to honor that bioindividuality and start listening to your body and what your body needs. Fear. Maybe you had some type of a trauma happen, you know, especially in the evening, if there was some type of uh, maybe abuse or sexual trauma or something at night, that can be a really traumatic time for people that can increase the cortisol. So addressing any fears that may come up using essential oils to help support you, you know, working with a counselor, working with things to help, that can all be really helpful. But also overwork and physical strain or mental strain. If you've had chronic infections in the body or chronic pain, that taxes the adrenal glands as well. That malabsorption that we're talking about, leaky gut, going back and looking at the digestive system, low blood sugar. If you've had a surgery, surgery is interesting because we think about running from the tiger. In surgery, you actually got bit by the tiger, right? The tiger gotcha. So now it's one of those things where, and people will talk and say, gosh, you know, it's been six weeks since my surgery and I still have a lot of energy issues or I'm not feeling the same or it's been a couple months. And I really tell people, if you've had a surgery, you really need to give your body about one to two years to build back the adrenals to help support that. That's a big thing. So remembering to be patient and showing your body a lot of love and gratitude along that healing journey to help. Looking at any, again, traumas or injuries, or if we're constantly feeling worried or having anxiety, 
this over time can cause that adrenal insufficiency. So it's important to start looking at that. So let's look at symptoms. You know, maybe you're catching every cold and flu that goes around. You crave sugar all the time or caffeine. You'll notice this if you need coffee. It's different if coffee is kind of part of your morning routine and you like holding something warm, drinking a warm beverage. But if you find that you need it, you are dependent on it in order to get up and function and do those things, that's something that we want to kind of look at. If you need a snack due to unstable blood sugar levels, you always have a snack on hand to help you with that. You wake up tired, right? But you get a second wind around 6 p.m. and then you're tired but wired at bed. You've got low energy. That can be another telltale sign. You have infertility or maybe painful sex or dry skin. And again, because of that pregnenolone steel that we talked about, you can see how that's affecting your sex hormone production. You have low, low thyroid symptoms, and low thyroid symptoms can be difficulty losing weight, cold hands and feet, hair loss. Those can all kind of come up. Maybe you're struggling with anxiety and it just comes out of nowhere and you worry about the littlest things all the time. Or you have really poor recovery from exercise. So you feel exhausted after exercise and you need three to four days to recover. You have hair that gets that gets thinned out, it starts to fall out, weight gain around the middle because stress causes your blood sugar levels to rise. You've got sensitivity to lights, low blood pressure, ligament laxity. If you've got three or four of these symptoms, you wanna to start to look into this. And again, the, the thyroid and the adrenals are very closely related. And you can see these other symptoms here too, fatigue, weakness, low body temp, brain fog, insomnia, poor concentration, decreased sex drive, muscle spasms, muscle joint pain, hypoglycemia, depression, dizziness upon standing. There's a lot of things that can fall into this. So what are we gonna do about it? We are going to chill out. <laughs> We're going to use our essential oils for emotional support. We wanna add in more de-stress activities like yoga, like meditation, like gratitude or prayer or appreciation. We're gonna do something called heart math. I love heart math. So Dr. Rita Marie Lascauza, she is my mentor and she taught me about heart math. And it is a really great tool, something that we can use to help us. We're going to utilize sleep. We're gonna be in bed by 10 p.m. Stop taking food about three hours before bed and get eight to 10 hours of sleep. Again, sometimes that's gonna be maybe 10 to 12 hours of sleep depending on the person. But we need to start resetting your circadian rhythms. And a lot of that's by going outside, getting fresh air, getting sunshine. Something that is so healing for the adrenal glands is getting morning light. So ideally, within the first 15 minutes of you waking up, we want to wake up when the sun rises, go to bed when the sun sets, work on that seasonal cyclical pattern there. But ideally, if you can get up when the sun rises and go outside for 15 minutes and not stare directly at the sun, but in the direction of the sun, this can help reset your circadian rhythms. It sounds so simple, but these are those lifestyle changes that can really move the needle in a big way. And this is what I'm talking about, right? Maybe you saw your doctor, maybe you ran all these tests and you said you're fine, but you don't feel good. These are those lifestyle changes, managing sleep, optimizing, really optimizing sleep, managing stress, all of those things, getting morning light, because that morning light tells the pineal gland in the brain, hey, it's morning time, stop making melatonin. Now we need to start making cortisol to wake up and then going to bed when the sun sets, getting off of our phones, off of the blue light, turning down the lights, going to bed, that will help to produce that melatonin so we sleep better. Little simple things, but they can really make a big difference in your energy and your mood and your sleep. Light exercise, light exercise. This is not a time for you to run a marathon. This is not a time for you to go out and do all these crazy exercise classes, high intensity stuff. And you'll notice that because usually people dealing with an adrenal issue, they get sick or they feel way worse after they exercise. So I'm talking about gentle walking, gentle yoga, tai chi, 
qigong if you do some type of exercise and it makes you feel worse you need to back off because we can forget that exercise can be a form of stress as well so this was me way back several years ago in the beginning exercise would just make me feel worse i was really struggling so i did a lot of gentle walking or Tai Chi, I love Tai Chi, and have worked my way up to being able to tolerate a higher impact workout and exercise, but it, I didn't start there. So honor your body with this. Diet is huge, okay? Whole fresh foods. We wanna avoid the packaged foods. Very important, so think more leafy greens, more fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, clean protein. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't have any added antibiotics or hormones or nasty things in there. Really looking at that, avoiding stuff that comes in a package and eating more of those beautiful, real whole foods, right? We want to eliminate gluten. It's highly inflammatory, as is dairy and sugar. Those are really going to spike our blood sugar levels. And in some people too, soy, corn, peanuts, and eggs. So those are the top seven food sensitivities, gluten, dairy, sugar, soy, corn, peanuts, and eggs. And I'm not even talking about an allergy, I'm talking about a sensitivity, I'm talking about leaky gut and things that can cause more inflammation in the body. So look at those. And maybe just start by adding, adding in more water, more whole fresh foods, more, more leafy greens, more vegetables, real food, and then start to let go of some of these inflammatory foods. It makes a big difference. And then getting fresh air and sunshine, again, vitamin D. So this is where we can even add that light exercise, maybe in the morning, in the first 15 minutes, if you can, when the sun rises, you go out for a gentle walk. You're getting that fresh air, you're getting that sunshine, it's helping with your circadian rhythms. It's a really great practice to do, or even sitting outside and drinking some warm lemon water. That can be really helpful. So let's talk about heart math, because this is something that can be a really great tool to use. And I also want to talk about the three-day sleep vacation. So let's start with heart math. Heart math is, it's almost like, a meditation, a deep breathing exercise, and we can do it together. So if you are not driving at the moment, we can try this together and do it all at once. But this is something where you wanna just put your hands over your heart. So you guys can do this with me. And you're going to just take a deep breath in and deep breath out and relax. And I want you to think of a time where it could be a vacation that you went on. It just depends on if you're a beach girl. I'm a beach girl, so I like to go to the beach. But maybe you like to go to the mountains. So just go to your happy place. Can be real, can be imaginary. And just really imagine yourself there in as much detail as possible. So I'm at the beach, so I'm feeling the toe between my, the sand between my toes. I'm hearing the ocean waves crashing. I'm feeling that ocean breeze. I'm feeling the sun on my skin. Like really take this place in in as much detail as you possibly can. And just breathe into that space. And while you're there in your happy place, visualizing that, I want you to think of a time where you felt great gratitude, love, joy, and appreciation. This can be a moment that you spent with a loved one, your partner, a child, a pet. It can be holding your newborn baby in your arms for the first time. Just think of that experience that you had. And just again, breathe deep into that love, joy, gratitude, appreciation. And take a deep breath in through there. And deep breath out. And you can see that that was very simple. That didn't take us a lot of time. But do you feel different? Do you notice a difference with that? Do you feel a little bit lighter? That is a powerful tool to do. And ideally, you know, start to practice this. You can add it in throughout your day. But 
start to notice when you're feeling stressed. See if you can pull that in. And as you practice this, and my recommendation is use an essential oil with this. So get out your lavender, put some on, smell it, or whatever oil gravitates towards you when you are feeling stressed. That can help with calm. And just go back to that place. And as you do this over and over, you can actually be in a stressed out situation and go to that place. Maybe you're in a stressful work meeting, but you can deep breathe and you can pull in those things because you've done it over and over. So you can actually do this without even closing your eyes, without putting your heart, your hand over your heart. You can get in the practice of doing this regularly and it's huge because we need tools to help us. It sounds so simple, it may sound kind of silly, but it really makes a big difference. So start to pull in the heart math, it's powerful. And ideally we do it five times a day. So ideally when you first wake up in the morning, before each meal, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, because when we're eating in a stressed out state, remember how we talked about when we're stressed out and that sympathetic nervous system takes over, it shuts down digestion because your body's trying to give you fuel to run away from the tiger or the stressor, and digestion isn't a priority when there's a big stress. So if we can do the heart math before we eat, this is why gratitude or prayer or deep breaths or heart math before you eat a meal helps to put you in that state where you can digest your food and absorb. Slowing down when we eat, really chewing our food well. This is all very, very important. So that's heart math. Now the three-day sleep vacation, let's talk about this. So this is something that I learned from Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo. She is my mentor. And she talks about you go to bed early and you gotta schedule this out. So you gotta schedule three days of uninterrupted time. Mama bears, for you, that may mean you go check into a hotel or you have somebody help you with your kids. You know, you set up some things ahead of time to allow you space to do that. And hopefully it's summer, you know, there are, there are holidays or different things. Maybe you can plan around for this. But my challenge to you would be look at your calendar and schedule a three-day sleep vacation. This is serious. This is for your health. So you go to bed early, 10 p.m., you get a good night's sleep and you stay in bed for 12 hours. You don't schedule anything during the day. You keep it super low key. You watch fun movies or read fun books. This is not a time to watch thrillers or anything scary or mystery novels or anything. Just, just keeping it light, keeping it fun, light activity, and you go to bed at 10 p.m. again and you stay in bed for 12 hours. If you can't sleep that whole 12 hours, you can meditate, you can pray, you can, again, read books or things, but you stay in bed the full 12 hours, even if you're not asleep. And this is amazing to reset your adrenal glands. And it's also a diagnostic tool, because if you do this and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better, I have more energy, hmm, Okay, there is an adrenal issue there. If you're still really struggling and noticing a lot of fatigue and stuff, there may be something else going on. So do a three-day sleep vacation. This is a reset for your body, and it's very, very powerful. I love, love, love this quote here. And it says, want a secret to adrenal balance. Know that you are enough. You can say no to taking on too much. This gives you more time to take care of your health rather than feeling constantly pushed to the edge for time. So great. Aviva Ram, she's a really good one to follow on Instagram too and Facebook. She has some really great tips. So this also comes from talking about a perception of stress because you start responding differently to stressful situations if you can change how you react to the stress. Again, the world isn't gonna change, we have to change. So we pull in our tools, we pull in our essential oils, we pull in deep breathing, we pull in heart math, we pull in coming back to a state of gratitude with that. It's very hard to be in a state of fear and gratitude and appreciation. You can't do that at the same time. So this is very, very important. Some supplements that can help. So we've got panathenic acid, B5. This is in your lifelong vitality pack. Vitamin C is also in your lifelong vitality pack. I love Mito2 Max. That's a doTERRA supplement. It has ashwagandha 
and cordyceps in it. It's got these adaptogenic herbs in it. So Mito2 Max is a really great supplement to help with adrenal support. So my recommendation would be using your lifelong vitality pack and then also ordering the Mito2 Max to have that on hand and use that for your body as well. Rhodiola is another one. So the Lifelong Vitality Pack, it is a whole food blend of vitamins and minerals. It's got your Microplex VMZ. This is your vitamins and minerals, that whole food blend. It's got your Omega blend, which is the XE Omegas. So your essential oil, or there are essential oils in it, which is really great, but your um, fatty acids, your essential fatty acids in there, your fish oil. And then there is a cellular vitality complex. So this helps with metabolic factors and cellular energy. That's the Alpha CRS Plus. And I really feel like that is the secret sauce to the Lifelong Vitality Pack and having all of those things there. It is non-GMO, it's gluten and dairy free. There's no folic acid or cyanocobalamin in there, those synthetic fillers. And there is a 30 day money back guarantee with this. So if you take the supplements for 30 days and you don't notice a difference, you can actually send back the empty bottles to doTERRA and get a refund. That's how confident they are. So again, taking a high quality supplement is very important for your health and wellness journey because our soil is depleted, because the nutrients in our food aren't the same as they were several years ago. So having something like this can be a really great tool. And I love that our beautiful essential oils are infused in this. So it's got a tummy tamer blend where some people may say, hey, when I take supplements, I just get an upset tummy. I don't feel good. That doesn't happen with this because we've got the tummy tamer blend in there. And I recommend taking it with food too. That will help. Other interesting thing with the fish oil. A lot of people say when they're taking a fish oil supplement that they get that verping, that regurgitation. That doesn't happen with the XC Omega because the essential oils work as a natural stabilizer with the fish oil. So it's really cool. If you haven't tried these yet, these are truly amazing supplements that you could try. Also vitamin C. Now there is vitamin C in the Lifelong Vitality Pack, but did you know that the adrenal glands use more vitamin C than any other part of the body? They use 80% of the vitamin C is going to the adrenal glands. So sometimes taking extra vitamin C during times of adrenal healing can be really helpful. It also helps to boost your immune system. So you can do, this is one that was recommended by my mentor, Dr. Rita Marie, PerQ, the potency guard tablets. You can do a thousand milligrams three times a day. You can actually increase vitamin C to bowel tolerance. So to where you notice that you start to get loose stool or diarrhea and then back off a little bit. It is water soluble. So you're not going to get toxic at high doses of vitamin C. The, it's a water soluble vitamin. So the body will flush it out, but this can really also help to boost the adrenals and the immune system. You could even look into like a liposomal liquid vitamin C. You could play with that, but try adding in a little bit more vitamin C during this time and see how your body feels. And again, we talked a little bit about Mito2 Max. That's the energy and stamina complex, but this really targets those specific nutrients that feed your adrenal glands. So the ashwagandha that we talked about, the cordyceps, it also has ginseng and coenzyme Q10, but it's a natural alternative to the caffeine and the energy drinks that we want to avoid. Caffeine is like a high interest loan with your adrenals. You're going to get temporary energy, but you're going to, it's, it's, you're going to have to pay that off eventually, right? There's going to be an energy depletion kind of going on with that too. So for people that are really struggling with adrenal fatigue, I recommend slowly coming off of the caffeine because that's mimicking what's going on with your body. That's an artificial energy high, but we don't really get to know what, what your levels are with that. Do it slowly, do it over time. Don't, don't cut it cold turkey and use your essential oils to help you with that. But these are also in a sodium laurel sulfate free vegetable capsule. It's gluten and dairy free. These are really nice if you're feeling that you need some support with this as we're talking about the adrenals. If you're thinking, oh yeah, that may sound like me, that might be a good one to add in. I also really like the Serenity Restful Complex Soft Gels and Oil. This is really going to help you with anxious feelings, with stress, with sleep. So this has lavender 
The soft gels have lavender, but also L-theanine, which is an amino acid that can help to calm lemon balm, passion flower, and chamomile. These can actually help to produce more GABA, your GABA production in the brain, so helping with mood. You can take one to three soft gels 30 minutes before bed. Now, you can also take one to two soft gels during times of increased stress, and it's not going to zonk you out. So say you have a medical procedure coming up or a stressful event coming up, you could take one or two of these to really help support you doing the deep breathing, doing the heart method that we talked about using your essential oils. But this is going to really help promote that healthy relaxation and that deep sleep that we want without feeling groggy the next morning. And it also helps to reduce stress and calm the nervous system which is what this is all about, calming down the nervous system. So the essential oil, you can diffuse that, you can put that on topically. You're not gonna take the essential oil internally, but that's why we have the soft gel, the Serenity soft gel, which is going to be your internal use. And I love to take this up even one notch and add one or two Copaiba soft gels, which can also help with sleep. So try that. But for me personally, my magic combo, I didn't notice a big difference with the two of the Serenity soft gels, but when I went up to three, that worked for me. And then I'll add in two Copaiba soft gels at night. And that has been amazing. And I was somebody who really, really struggled with sleep for a very long time. And it's made such a difference for me. Now let's talk about essential oils for adrenal support. These are going to be more specific. So we've got basil. Basil is a great one. Basil emotionally is the oil of renewal. It's going to help. You could do a drop of basil under your tongue. That is not going to taste awesome, but it is highly effective. So if you can get used to the taste or you can put it in a veggie capsule if you want, or even smelling it, rosemary, geranium, ylang ylang, zendocrine. So any of those you could take internally. You could do two to three drops in a veggie capsule and take that maybe two to three times a day, or you could apply it topically and apply it right over the adrenals, which we talked about are over the kidneys, so that flank area in the lower back. Citrus Bliss is actually really great for supporting with energy, but it's not for internal use. And Elevation. Elevation is actually one of my favorite oils for adrenal support. I am diffusing this constantly. I'm actually diffusing it with lime essential oil. It's the free product of the month this month, Elevation and Lime, a great, great diffuser blend. Now also safety tip because it's summer, anything that has a citrus oil, we don't wanna put on our skin and go directly out into the sunlight because it can increase the likelihood that you could burn because those are photosensitive oils. So put them under your clothes, right? You can put it over the adrenals and then put your, put your clothes on or you can put it in your hair or on a diffuser necklace or on a scarf or something where you're smelling it to help you. So just be careful that Zendocrine does have citrus in it. So does Citrus Bliss and so does Elevation. So just notice those, be aware. And it actually says right on the label. So if you're not sure, just look there and it'll say, it'll be on the, on the bottle if it's a photosensitive oil, which is really nice. Just like it says on the bottle, if it's an oil you can take internally. So if you see a supplement fact, like what you would see on food, you can take that oil internally. If you don't, then it's just going to be for topical or aromatic use, not internal use. So this is an adrenal support roller. This is information that I got from Stephanie Fritz. She's the essential oil midwife. Love her information. Highly recommend that you go follow her. But this is a blend of five drops each. It's basil, rosemary, geranium, and ylang ylang. And do that in a 10 ml bottle top with your fractionated coconut oil and you're going to apply over the adrenals and low back two to three times a day. So you're going to put that on. I'm going to roll some on my low back right now while we're talking, right? You can even put it on like perfume if you want. So you could put it on like over your wrists and ladies, if you can do one thing for your health and wellness, ditch the perfume and the synthetic fragrance. It's not serving you. And you can even do a palm inhale, roll it on your hands, rub together and do a deep inhale. And this is a great roller blend to try. So again, you're going to see the best use and best benefits with your essential oils when you're using them consistently, just like with nutritional changes, with supplements, you wouldn't expect to get a great benefit from a supplement or from a diet change if you only did it for one day. Same thing with your oils. So you're going to want to use them regularly and apply them and then go into that heart math, go into that deep breathing, use all these tools together. 
That's where you're going to see maximum benefit. There's a lot of essential oils for stress. So many. Okay. <laughs> the citrus oils are very uplifting. So they are great for stress. But also some of the other oils can be very grounding, like cedarwood and sandalwood and vetiver, more the tree or oils. So use what resonates with you, but things like bergamot, cardamom, cedarwood, Roman chamomile, clary sage, frankincense, geranium, grapefruit, jasmine, lavender, lemon, marjoram, melissa, neroli, beautiful oil for stress, wild orange, pedigree, rose, very high vibrational oil, sandalwood, vetiver, ylang ylang. These are some suggestions, but I would also recommend checking out the Emotions and Essential Oil book. See which one really resonates with you from that as well. And also smell the oils. Trust your intuition. Do you naturally gravitate toward an oil? Is there an oil that you feel like, oh, I really like that? Tune into that intuition, get intuitive with the oils and use those to help you too. Okay, so here is a stress support roller blend. This was actually from the book, the complete book of essential oils and aromatherapy by Valerie Ann Woodward. And she talks about using five drops of clary sage, Roman chamomile, lavender, and geranium in a 10 ml roller bottle. And you're going to top with fractionated coconut oil. And you're going to put it on the bottoms of your feet, wrist, and over the heart two to three times a day. So again, these are just some suggestions. You can try these out. You can play with these blends, see how they're working for you. It can be really great. Another blend that I really love is equal parts of serenity and balance essential oil. That could be something that you try too. You can play, you can use which ones you like. Okay, here's another blend from the same book from Valerie Ann Woodward's book. Five drops each of Robin Chamomile, Ylang Ylang, Pettigrain, and Sandalwood. And this may be like Pettigrain, we kind of think of it as the masculine Lavender, it works. The chemical constituents are very similar to lavender, but it doesn't have that floral scent. So we kind of think of it as the guy's lavender. So if you wanted a stress support roller, maybe for the guys in your life, or maybe if you just didn't want as much of the florals, Ylang Ylang is going to give you a little bit of a floral there. Uh, but this might be a good one to try too. And again, you're just going to top with your fractionated coconut oil and put it over the wrists, bottoms of the feet, and over the heart. And use these tools with everything else that you're doing. Okay, brief talk on Addison's disease. Function of the adrenal glands is either severely limited or completely shut down with Addison's. So this can be caused by autoimmune disorders, cancer, tuberculosis, tuberculosis or other diseases, can cause a loss of hormones from the adrenal cortex and can cause dehydration. So symptoms of this are gonna be tiredness, dizziness when standing, thirst, weight loss, dark patches of pigmentation appearing on the skin, and elevation can actually be a really great oil to support the adrenal glands. So this might be a nice one to put over the kidneys or just inhale to support you. Cushing syndrome is an overabundance of corticosteroids, overabundance of cortisol in the body, and it's caused by overproduction of these steroids by the adrenal glands. So this overproduction can be caused by a growth in the adrenal glands or a tumor in the thyroid leading to the production of too much corticotropin. It can be caused by taking artif artificial cortisone or, or cortisone-like substances. Symptoms may be weight gain, muscle loss, weakness, bruising, and osteoporosis. On guard might be a nice oil to use to support you. And you can put that on the bottoms of your feet. You can diffuse that. You can have that on hand. Elevation, I really like for all things adrenal support as well. So just a little more information for you guys there. Here's some of the resources. So Dr. Jessica Drummond, she's with the Integrated Women's Health Institute. And Dr. Rita Marie Lascalzo with the Institute of Nutritional Endocrinology. They are both great mentors of mine. I love, I got some really interesting, great stuff from Trancy as well. She is a uh, naturopath. The Complete Book of Essential Oils and Aromatherapy by Valerie Ann Woodward, The Essential Life Book, The Modern Essentials Book. You can also check out The Emotions and Essential Oils Book. Use your resources to help you with these things. 
And here's my contact information. If you're new to me, if you're new to following me, I've got a website. I do private health coaching with clients. I teach a lot on different health and wellness topics in the Learning with Dr. Laura Facebook group. That's once a month. There's my email. And if you would, if you're finding value, please go over to my Facebook page. And if you would like it, and if you're finding great value from the education that we're sharing, please give it a review. If you've had a positive experience, I would greatly appreciate it. You can follow me on Instagram and Periscope and Pinterest as well. And I have a YouTube channel with over 400 videos on health and wellness and essential oils. And then we teach the monthly classes here, as we mentioned. If you are new to essential oils, if you don't already have an account with doTERRA, I would love to be an essential oil educator and mentor for you. We have a special going on just in July where we are actually, we've launched a three month virtual health coaching program and you will get access to that for free with any starter kit if you wanna get started with me. So this is our most popular, the big bottle starter kit. It's our top 10 oils plus a diffuser and it's 275. I'm also gonna hop on a welcome call with you. I'm gonna teach you exactly how to use these oils. But you can see a lot of the oils that we talked about for stress, for immune support, for digestion, for just emotional support, adrenal support are in this kit, which is huge. And you'll be plugged into a private Facebook group where we do continued education and support on using the oils and a community. And you will also be plugged into our three month virtual health coaching program, which is really cool. In July, we're all talking about sleep and we're all doing a two week sleep challenge together for the accountability and the support. And we talked about how much sleep really plays into adrenal health. So that's going to be an awesome one. There's also a smaller kit of this. It's the little bottles. So there's, there are five ML bottles. This big kit is 15 ML bottles. The little kit is 150 and it's the top 10 oils. It doesn't have a diffuser, but it's a nice sample kit. So depending on what worked for you and what worked for your finances for $150 or basically for less than double the price, you get three times the essential oil, which is huge. 275, you get the essential oils, you get my education and mentoring, we hop on a welcome call together, you get the private Facebook book group and community, but also our virtual health coaching program that is going on. We're, we're loving it. We're having so much fun and popping in and teaching and, and focusing on sleep in July, focusing on digestion in August and focusing on immune support in September. So it's been such a joy. So again, if you're brand new, if now's the time, if you're kind of thinking, oh, I really wanna make these changes, because here's the thing, and I think this is so interesting, right? I can give you all of the education. I can teach you about adrenal support, adrenal health. I can teach you about digestion or nutrition or how to use the essential oils, any of those things. But until you take the action, until you start implementing those things into your daily life, you're not going to see changes. Knowledge is power, but action actually is what makes things happen when we're, when we're adding that in. So that is my challenge to you is if you are kind of sitting on the fence, you're like, oh man, I, I really want to make some changes in my health. Let's do it together. Let's plug you into a supportive community and get support and get accountability and support you with these goals. That would be huge. That's my goal with that. And if you are already have an account with doTERRA, take some of the stuff that you've learned from this class. Maybe take one thing or one or two things. It doesn't have to be a big thing. I like to make small, consistent changes over time because that's when you're going to see that real transformation happens, small, sustainable changes. And share, post with me. I love when people share what they're doing, how they're using the essential oils to support them. It is truly a joy to come in here and educate and teach. And it's such a blessing to connect with you guys once a month here in this space. Now we do have a two curls on oil podcast. It's another place that I educate in and we actually educate on doTERRA and the business of doTERRA. And that's actually coming up on Monday, July 8th at 7 PM central time. So you can mark your calendars. And if you're curious about upcoming events, check them out over on my Facebook page, click the events tab. And if you 
click that you're, if you follow the page, you're actually going to get notification of any upcoming events so you don't miss out. And then if you're in the West Texas area, if you're local to me in Amarillo or Canyon, Texas, we're doing a make and take class on travel necessities at my home on Tuesday night on the 9th at 7 p.m. So come join me there because it's always so much fun to start incorporating the oils there. Let me know if you guys have any questions. You can post them into the comments. If you're on Zoom watching, you can put it into the Zoom chat, or if you're watching over on Facebook Live, just post them in the comments there. This replay will be up until the end of the month, so you can watch it as many times as you like until then. And then we take that class down and a new class comes up for August. I'll have to think about what we should do our, our next class on. You guys have given me some good ideas of things that you were you are wanting. And if you ever have suggestions for future classes, let me know. So Linda asks, how does one know if must only eat nuts that are soaked and roasted? You know, the thing with nuts for some people, they may have issue the lectins and they may have issue digesting and absorbing those. So if you are one of those more sensitive type people, you can soak your nuts overnight and just kind of rinse them off. That can help to make them more easily digestible. Some people will know, they, they can kind of intuitively know, oh, I have an issue with nuts when I'm eating them. So you can play with that a little bit. And I really like that bio-individuality and seeing what works best for that person. So some of my clients do feel a lot better and do better when they soak their nuts overnight and have that on hand. It's not a bad thing to do, right? So if it's something that you're open to, it can help you to better absorb and digest those. All right, so if you guys have any other questions, post them below, let me know. And to enter our giveaway, this is for people over on Facebook. So if you're watching on Zoom, you're gonna to wanna to head over to the Learning with Dr. Laura Facebook page and just comment below this video something that you learned. Anything that you learned, that you found helpful, that was something that gave you value from this class, anything at all, that's how you'll enter into the giveaway. And what I'm giving away is actually, I'm gonna make you a roller of the adrenal support blend that I shared with you that has the basil and ylang, -ylang and geranium and rosemary. So you'll be getting a roller bottle for me. This is open to somebody, a US viewer watching. So you can post that in the comments, anything that you found helpful to be able to enter into the giveaway for that because I want you guys to try this. And again, action, using the oils, using them with consistently, consistency, taking your supplements, making the dietary changes, working on sleep, all of that is gonna be a huge thing. And maybe just start with one thing, right? Maybe just start with sleep or drinking more water or slowly decreasing the caffeine or maybe schedule that three-day sleep vacation. I want you guys to take one action step and so that would be great too if you want to share that with me. What's the one action step from learning this information that you're going to take and you're going to start utilizing in your everyday life? I would love to hear. I'd love to hear how these are, are helping. Because again, the education is great, but until we're putting it in action, we're not going to see big changes in our life. All right, you guys are kind of quiet. I don't see any questions coming in. I'll give it just a few more minutes and then I'll hop off and let you guys get back to your Friday. I hope if you guys are here in the States, you had a happy 4th of July yesterday or enjoying your summer. And hoping that you guys found great value from this class. It's always so much fun to come in and educate and teach. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care. I'll be back in this group next month for another health and wellness virtual class. Love the interaction with you guys and have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye.